This is Maggie Forrest with Fair Square House Buyers, and we are continuing our series on the probate process in Kentucky. And today we're going to be talking about what the probate process actually looks like in Kentucky and take you through what the steps are. Before we get started, I just want to give a quick caveat that we are not attorneys at Fair Square House Buyers, but we do work with a lot of great attorneys. So if you need legal advice or seeking legal counsel in dealing with a probate case, please reach out to us and we're happy to make a connection for you. So let's get started with the probate process in Kentucky. So before you even start the process, you actually first need to determine if it's even necessary to go through probate. So um, first you would need to go through and, and understand, are there items that would need to pass through the, the probate court? Uh, Non-probate non property includes items that pass from the descendant to another person by a mechanism other than probate. And these items could be property that the descendant owned as joint tenants with rights of survivorship with another person who's still alive. That it would be, for instance, like a, a married couple that have a joint bank accounts or maybe they have both their names on the mortgage of the house that they own. So in those situations, um, that, that property or those bank accounts would not act, need to go through the probate process because there is a, a surviving joint owner um, that would be handling it. Assets such as retirement plans and life insurance policies that have a beneficiary designated um, as part of that contract do not have to go through the probate process. So that would be like a retirement plan that you may have had with your work or any life insurance policies that you, you and your spouse may have signed up for. Um, a bank or investment accounts that have pay on death or transfer on death features do not need to go through the probate process. And property that has been transferred into a trust prior to the descendant's death, which is sometimes called a, a living trust, um, those do not need to go through the probate process. So once you figure that out and, and you determine you actually do need to go through probate, there is some information you need to gather before you kick off the process. So the first would be the last will and testament of the descend descendant, um, any and all known property and assets owned by the descendant, and any and, and all known debts of the descendant. And then you also want to identify the beneficiaries of the estate. So hopefully the person um, that has passed away has, has a will, has kept all of this organized for you, and has named the beneficiaries within that will. Um, and it's a really good reminder that for all of us, that no matter where you are in your life stage, it's really good to have your affairs in order because unfortunately we never know what tomorrow holds and you don't want to leave your family in a stressful, messy situation by not having your estate in order. So once you've um, identified all of this and gathered your documentation, you will want an attorney that is skilled in the probate process in Kentucky to advise you. And we've done another article all about how to find the best attorney to, to, to help you with the process and giving you a list of questions to ask them when you're interviewing attorneys. So definitely make sure to check that article out on our blog. So the very first step, once you've gone through all those initial ones, is you're gonna begin with the preparation of a petition for probate. And that's gonna be filed with the district court in the county in which the descendant lived. So this um, petition will provide the court with basic information such as the descendant's identity, their date of their death, whether a will exists, um, the descendant's next of kin, and then the proposed executor of the estate, as well as an estimate of the property and the value. So once that's filed, um, a hearing will be scheduled for the judge to review all of the submitted documentation to determine their validity. And then at that time, the executor is officially appointed. Um, the official representative of a descendant's estate is called an executor. Sometimes they're also called an administrator. And this person is the, is the one that's going to really handle the probate process from here on out. So once that person has been appointed, the executor has been appointed, um, they will start administer administering the estate in accordance with the laws and as well as with the will. So this includes that they'll have access to like bank account information, um, authority to take legal positions and settle legal issues regarding the estate. And then they have the authority to take control over the descendants probate assets, including the sale of any real estate. So once the executor has been appointed, they have to within 60 days, file um, an inventory of assets with the court. And that would include listing the estimated value of those assets at the time of the descendants death. 
and they also have to provide a notice of the open probate matter to all the creditors of the descendants estates as well as to potential heirs and beneficiaries and at this point the estate has to remain open for at least six months to allow creditors to make claims against the estate so if the descendant had debts that were owed they will have up to six months to come back and, and, and try to make good on those debts while the estate is open. So once all of this has happened and the estate is deemed financially sound, the estate will pay the debts and costs of the administration in full and then distribute the remaining assets to the beneficiaries. So um, in some circumstances, the executor may sell probate assets, such as real estate property, um, to make cash available to pay these debts. So when does it actually all end? So after all these administrative tasks have been completed, the estate will need to be closed within the court. And at this time, the executor will be discharged and they'll be relieved of any further responsibility. And in Kentucky, estates can be closed either by an informal final settlement process or a formal final settlement process. An informal final settlement process involves the filing of a simple form in which the executor informs the court that the estate administration is complete and documents are submitted to the court signed by the beneficiaries indicating their satisfaction with the estate administration. Based on the filing of these documents, the court will usually issue an order closing the estate and discharging the executor from their duties. A formal set final settlement is more complicated and involves the, um, the providing the court um, with complete information about the administration of the estate, including an accounting of the estate's financial transactions. And parties with an interest in the estate at this point have an opportunity to present any objections they may have. And sometimes the court will hold a hearing to resolve these objections. So these are gonna be the times when you may have family members fighting over the assets or how things should be distributed, or maybe there's some contesting of the will. And that's when you're gonna to need to file a, a, a formal settlement. And hopefully that's not going to be the case for you. But at this point, you definitely want to make sure you have a good attorney helping you manage through all of this. So this is a very simplified summary of the probate process. Um, I definitely recommend sitting down with experienced legal counsel to get more information um, and to, to ask questions to and just to make sure that you're having the right person representing you in this case. Like I said at the beginning of this, we have contacted a lot of great attorneys and happy to make a, a recommendation or connect you with one if you're at that point that you need one. In the meantime, if there's anything we can do, if you have any questions, if there's any way we can help, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks.